All right, it's 5.30. I'll call the regular city council meeting of the City of International Falls to order for Monday, July 19th, 2021. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a pledge allegiance to the flag. If you could all join me. Thank you, everybody. Our, uh, uh, please note that we are uh, we are missing one uh, counselor this evening. Counselor uh, Buller is online. Walt, can you mute your uh, your mic? We're getting feedback. Uh, we we do have Counselor uh, Walt Buller online. Uh, he cannot vote this evening, uh, but he can take part in the conversations. Uh, he just can't have a vote. Um, that is due to the uh, Minnesota um, governor uh, taking away the special uh, COVID regulations with. Uh, Minnesota statute. I don't even know which one it is anymore. I only said it for the last year and a half, but now I forgot which one it is. But anyways, we cannot no longer vote over uh, over the internet um, due to COVID being done in Minnesota by resolution. So the first item on our agenda is to approve the agenda with any uh, um, additions or deletions. We have none uh, before us as of right now. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we'll go to the minutes of uh, our special committee of the whole meeting for July 6th. Chair would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we go to the regular City Council meeting of the same date, July 6, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. And finally, we have the minutes of our committee of the whole meeting from uh, last Monday, July 12th. Chair would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. And any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Uh, one of the things that I had noticed, and I, I forgot to bring it up, uh, we didn't have a meeting on, on July 6th because of the holiday. Those, those meetings were um, the 7th because of the uh, 4th of July holiday. Tuesday, yes. But besides that, sir. Yep. Uh, next, we have uh, payments of claims for our uh, transfers and accounts payable. We have uh, regular, or I'm sorry, we have uh, transfers to the 401 permanent improvement uh, of $66,666.66. That is coming from uh, evenly the 601 water and the 603 sewer in the amount of $33,333.33 um, out of both accounts. We have monies uh, going to the 403 reserved for capital outlay, $25,760.42. That's coming from the 601 water in $19,136.17 and coming from the 603 sewer in the amount of $6,624.25 for a total amount transferred of $92,427.08. Accounts payable, regular International Falls claims of 
I'm sorry, $567,650.73. Airport Commission claims of $5,515.38. International Falls Public Library Board claims of $9,079.91. And the EDA uh, fund is $276.16 for claims. For a total of uh, payable claims of $582,000, $522.18. Chair would entertain a motion to adopt that resolution. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next, we go to audience. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on something that's not on the agenda? Please, Mr. Joe Schwartz. I'll be known as the public employee. Mutual obligation of public employee. Makes it illegal for an employee. Other conditions. Right. Union appropriate for the required subjects of bargaining. Bargaining covers all matters, hours of employment, other conditions of employment, mandatory. Of which the employer is well. In addition to wages, bonuses, group insurance. Recall. Thank 
Thank you. I have nothing. City Attorney, do you have anything to add on that? No. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything from audience to uh, bring to the council? Bring it now. I, I, I'd like to have the, any discussion with uh, that particular item with the council. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. My name is Emma Rudd, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the City of International Falls Local 49 members as a union steward. I'm here to present the City Council with an official signed petition from this group ahead of your consideration at this meeting of new business item number nine. I'm presenting each City Council member with a copy of the petition with employee names redacted, but I'm presenting the original to the City Administrator for their file. The petition reads, we, the undersigned employees of the City of International Falls Public Works, are in favor of employee A and B being reinstated to their current positions upon obtaining a valid Minnesota commercial uh, vehicle driver's license. We are in total agreement to help the City of International Falls Public Works Department in a way we can to continue to operate efficiently and as safely as possible. We are looking forward to them returning to these positions to serve the citizens of the City of International Falls as they have in the past. This petition has come about because there has been much misinformation spread about these two individuals and their positions with the City of International Falls. While this item is on the agenda, noting it as being a human resources recommendation, I do want to point out that it was a split vote of the Human Resources Committee, as there were only two members of the Human Resources Committee that can vote and one ex officio non-voting member. It is a tad frustrating to be having this conversation with not a full group of the City Council present, but I urge you to be open in listening what I have to say. It needs to be reiterated that while under each of these current positions, it is a requirement to hold a commercial driver's license, they use their CDL very little, roughly 20% of the time. The only time a CDL is required for the Public Works Department is if you're operating a dump truck or hauling a piece of equipment on a trailer. One of the employees included in this has a primary duty operating the excavator, which does not require a CDL. Also, each employee has signed postings to act as backup to other positions, including these two employees who have signed postings to be backups to other positions that do not require CDLs. It seems quite excessive to request two employees to take 33% cuts in pay and move to the bottom of the tier indefinitely with no clear idea when they'll be able to move back up. This group stands in solidarity with these two employees and urge you to consider the agreement presented by Local 49 weeks ago. These employees are being asked to perform many of the same duties as the maintenance one worker does for much less pay on the basis that they don't have the CDL. There are numerous city employees that have CDLs and are waiting in the wings to step up and help. It is up to the person in charge of public works to call on them as needed. There are more employees that have their CDLs than it is equipment requiring a CDL to operate it. There are only 10 and 11 months respectively until they have their CDLs reinstated. It is a requirement in my job description to have a Class D driver's license. I rarely use my driver's license as part of my job. If I were without my driver's license for up to a year, I can't fathom that I would see an indefinite demotion or potential termination when there's another employee that works with me that could fill this role in the interim. I'm holding up a sign of something that I helped create for the Public Works Garage, and I believe it hangs on the wall somewhere. It's entitled, Who Are You? It talks about a job needing to get done and who's able to do it. It says, this is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry that, about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up being that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. 
Well, I can say that this petition is very clear. These employees are very vocal and willing to pitch in and get the job done when it requires it. But what I will tell you is if you pass the agreement before you today, presented by management and the city attorney, I can come to a reasonable conclusion that nobody will be doing the job that anybody could once have done because you've now alienated the entire public works department. Next time you have three water breaks in less than 24 hours, see what employees are willing to answer the phone. I bet your list gets shorter. I urge you when you go to address new business item number nine to consider an amendment as our desire is to see these employees reinstated to their previous positions upon reobtaining a valid Minnesota commercial driver's license. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Just out of curiosity, how many members are in uh, the Public Works Department? 18. Thank you. Anybody else for under audience want to bring anything to the attention of the council? Please. Dan. I'm Dan Anik with the 49ers. I represent the Public Works Group. I'll try not to repeat some of the stuff that was in the, in the petition, but uh, it, it might just carry over a little bit. But um, So I, I'm here negotiating in public as well. The process takes place. This is my second time here. I still feel I need to be here negotiating. You know, I'm going to ask something of you, and um, I'm used to facing the crew, you know, some of the administration. But usually, we don't have an audience like this for negotiation. So um, we have spent time with you. Thank you for that. But normally, negotiations, we meet, we meet, we come to some agreement that. Normally we say, okay, we, I can take this back to the group. What's presented to these guys right now, to the two employees, that's a real hard agreement to take back to them. Um, the, the, the two things that we feel are still in contention is the 33% pay cut, then with no end date, we would appreciate some discussion when you come to item 9A and B. I hope there'll be some discussion, and this isn't just a slam dunk, that but take into consideration um, you're, set, you're setting a standard for our public works department. Now you're setting a, a citywide standard as well as a community standard. There's a lot of talk going on out there in, in this extended community. I worked 30 years for Kuchichin County. I, I've been a member of your extended community. People are, everybody knows about this, you know, and we're not asking for full wages with no, with no penalties. There, there's penalties either way, you know. Just please try to modify this um, with an end date upon attain, obtaining their commercial driver's license. Taking cons into consideration the 33% pay cut. Um, I, did, I did ask at one meeting to maybe, maybe look back at time cards and see how much time was actually spent um, for one of, the, one, of the, one of the employees that runs Excavator. Um, we've rented. A, a private company to move that excavator in the past, I'm pretty sure we would have somebody on the city crew that could move that excavator for that employee, and he, he still can run that excavator with the water breaks that we just had. He could have put in a bunch of valuable hours for the city, just like he's been doing in previous years. Um, I hope your public works committee, no matter what the outcome of this agreement is, if it isn't modified and, and they will be presented with what is on your table, I hope your public works committee will at least over have some oversight to utilize these guys for the skills they have. You know, we, we created a labor position. I say we because I, I guess I feel I'm part of this because I represent these guys. We still have questions on that labor position job description. You, you are not getting a lawnmower, a lawnmower operator, snowblower operator. These are highly skilled employees. And for that 33% pay cut, that that's a lot to ask when, um, in, in the in, with no end date, the combination of those two things, we could be looking at two years from now. These guys have their CDLs back, and they will be they will be answering that call when there's those water breaks, and they have their CDL back. They will jump in that truck, like the guys did Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You will be getting 
the complete workload out of these guys after one year anyway. So please consider amending what's before you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Dan. Anybody else have, from audience have anything to bring forward? All right, there will be an opportunity at the end of the meeting as well. Uh, we'll go right into old business. Approve the second and final reading of the contract ordinance 975 for 22nd Street Road Construction and uh, Highway Lane Reconstruction Project, including Main Avenue South built bid alternate and Court Lane built bid alternate. Um, that was in your packet. The chair would entertain a motion for the second uh, second reading. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. We have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion? Uh, I have to assume, uh, Ricky, that you're here for this piece of the, the agenda since you're most. Have you had an opportunity to see the dollar amounts? I just got them on Friday, so um, if, was there a copy of the packet there so you would be able to? Huh? Get the email packet, don't you? You're on my list, on the email list. <laughs> all right. Does anyone have any questions on the project at all? Mr. Mayor, Please. Did, uh, Ricky, was the was the issue with your curb resolved, or has anybody talked to you as as promised? Nobody's talked to me at all. Thank you, everybody. And that was two weeks ago, I think. And nobody's gotten a hold of you yet. I know the public works director isn't here, but does anybody? Do we know anything about that or if they're going to or? I was under the assumption that they had spoken with him actually the day he was here, that Joe was had his place and they had talked about his driveways. Did Joe not see you that day of the last council meeting? You had talked to Joe prior to the meeting for, for a little bit, correct? In, in the morning, yeah. Okay. That's when he decided that they wanted to do a 32-foot driveway for 100 doesn't work. No, he was going to come and visit you after that as well. Never seen anybody. All right, does the council have any questions or uh, ideas on this one? The, the way I look at this one is there's no there's no rush to have this uh, uh, put out. We could push this out until uh, next month, and that way uh, we can get those questions. We only have one person that's on the 22nd Street that is directly impacted on this. Took the time to come in and have uh, to get the information. I, I think it would behoove us to allow him to be able to have some of those questions answered before we pass the, the final reading. This is the first time that uh, we had all the numbers laid out in front of us. So um, this isn't a project that we would be doing this this fall anywho. So uh, if the council's okay with it, I would uh, I would request that we push this to our first meeting in August, if everyone's okay with that, for the second reading. That's fine. Okay. So the chair would entertain a motion to table this till our next uh, next council meeting. So moved. We have a motion by uh, Councillor Kraus. Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. <laughs> Any discussion or concerns on that? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. 
All right, we go to <clears throat> first item on the agenda, which is a resolution. This is for an application for a exempt permit for the auxiliary to Peter Graham BFW Post 2948 to conduct a raffle on November 8th, 2021. Chair would entertain a motion to adopt that resolution. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes, motion carries, 4-0. Next, consider the letter of, uh, consider a support of the new Virginia Public Safety Center project. Chair would entertain a motion to um, consider a, a support of, the, of that project. So moved. Do we have a motion by Councillor Krause? Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second by Councillor Deach? Any discussion? I guess I, I have a question. Uh, I realize that uh, that it's 100 miles away, but of all of the the stuff, I mean, usually we get stuff in Coochin County, we're supporting Little Fork, we're supporting uh, even Fort Francis projects. This one seems just a little bit far away for us to be throwing our support to, but um, do we have any information on this other than they're, they're requesting? The back letter there explains that they're getting a USDA rural development um, facilities program grant, mm -hmm. and that grant, that's part of it, the requirement for that is I, I don't know the exact radius, but I'm assuming that it's a, a distance from their project, and so they sent their request. All right, we have a motion and a second uh, for a letter of support for the Virginia Public Safety <clears throat> Center project. I will call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next, we have a... Uh, uh, letter of resignation from a full-time uh, uh, paramedic, Samantha Butts, effective Monday, July 26, and then to further approve Sa Sammy Butts as a casual paramedic for the International Falls Ambulance Service, effective Tuesday, July 27th. Uh, we'll take this in two different motions. So first, I would uh, accept a, mo a motion to um, accept the letter of resignation. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion? I just want to say thank you to Sam for all of her time with the city. She's been here as long as I've been here. And honestly, she's been here even in EMT status before that. So she has, uh, she has done this and uh, this position for quite some time. And as I understand it, She's looking at getting into nursing, so taking the next step in uh, in her professional development. So I, uh, I I look forward to seeing the things that she does in the future. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the letter of resignation. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. So next it would be to keep her on as a casual paramedic for the City of International Falls effective Tuesday, July 27th. I'll sure. make that motion. Thank you. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Question. Please. And this is probably for the chief there. Um, I see we got a, a full-time vacancy for the paramedic position. Is this only one we'll have at this time? That's correct. Okay. That's it. All right. Any other questions? <clears throat> Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. All right, next we go to um, Captain Promotion, uh, Chief Koscheck. Brief, I just want to read the letter. Yep. Recognize the achievements of all the Honorable Mayor Drola, Council Members of City. My recent appointment as Chief 
Commission of Capital and Pavement. I'd like to take the opportunity to ask you to recommend my appointment of Sergeant Mitchell Sarge to the rank of Captain, effective July 20th, 2021. Sergeant Lassard was hired as a part-time officer in 2002. 2013 was promoted to the rank of sergeant, a position in which he led officers unerringly in both everyday duties and critical incidents. He served as a role model and mentor to new officers, including myself. Sergeant Lassard embodies the IFP core values of accountability, integrity, stewardship, and excellence in both his professional and personal life. I have every confidence that he will assist me in leading the IFPD into this new era of policing. I just wanted to add that I'm sure all of you know Sergeant Lassard is going to be captain. Um, I can't think of a better person for the role, and he's no one to respect more in the police department. So I'm excited for him for this opportunity. You're welcome. Well, any questions for uh, for the chief? No. Just council information. So if you want to go right into your next. And I know the two, I wrote one letter for the two items we have for the approval right. of the hires. Yep. We have two vacancies with Chief Master retiring and Officer Baum's leaving. <clears throat> we recently conducted interviews, and I'm happy to say we have two good candidates, which in this day and age, like we've discussed at length, is very difficult to do. Um, <coughs> briefly, Anthony Castens, who's in here today, was hired as a part-time patrol officer in July 2019. In that time, he's proven to be a proactive officer who realizes the importance of building community relationships. His integrity and moral standing are evident in both his professional and personal life. I think it speaks to his character that we all know Anthony, even though he just moved here to. And again, I have not heard a bad word in the community about him, which is also a testament to someone who is as active as he is in his police work. So I'm really excited for that coming up. And I can go right into the other one too, unless you want to make please. a motion on that. No, please go ahead. Logan Hulse was hired as a part-time patrol officer in January 2020. During the course of his employment, he was showing hard work ethic and an adherence to law enforcement ideals. I believe his strong moral compass will serve the department well. Logan can be here tonight. Very excited for the opportunity presented to him, though, after two years of hard work with our department part-time. I would ask that you would consider hiring both of these individuals. All right. Well, um, I, I appreciate you coming and uh, presenting this. Um, the first one we would have is to uh, uh, approve the hire of Anthony Castens as a full-time patrol officer. Chair would entertain a motion to accept that uh, under the terms of the labor contract and effective July 20th, 2021. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Kraus. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Mayor, I'd like uh, the officer to stand up so we know which one we're talking about. That one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're both strangers to me. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. So we have a motion and a second to uh, uh, move um, and Anthony to a full-time patrol officer. Uh, chair would call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries 4-0. Next, we have uh, to approve the hire of Logan Hulst as a full-time patrol officer, um, as recommended by the chief of police per the terms and conditions of the labor contract effective July 20th, 2021. Chair, I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Any discussion? He's not here. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's Mitch. <laughs> Hearing none, okay. call the question. Yeah, I would have been in the dark. All right. Call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. So the way I just kind of wanted to handle that, and I do really appreciate you asking that question, I was going to actually ask uh, uh, Mitch if you wanted to come up and say anything in, in your new position as, uh, as the captain. Because I, I, I know you love to talk to people in public. <laughs> but you do know Mitch. Oh, no, I just want to say thank you. Twenty years. Yeah, that was the right answer. Twenty years. I appreciate that. Congratulations, thank Mitch. you. I look forward to it. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. So, with uh, having the the two uh, part time uh, patrol officers moving up into that, um, that opens up the process to appoint a sergeant uh, within the department. Um, so, the chair would entertain a motion to move forward with the application process to appoint a sergeant within the department. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do second. we have a second? We have a second by Councillor Beach. In discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Then we go into the recommendations of the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we also need to authorize Chief Koscik to begin the process to hire part time patrol officers. Chair would entertain that motion. So we'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Let's start the carousel. Yeah. All right, we have a motion and a second to start the hiring of part time patrol officers. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I will vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you so very much. All right, next is item number nine recommendations from the Human Resource Committee. Um, approve. Uh, a letter of agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 49, Public Works and Administrative Office staff. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that agreement. I'll make that motion with a discussion in a minute. Yep, we have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second for discussion. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. All right, please. Mayor Drova, I would like to amend the motion that upon the two employees. Can we have a discussion first before we do anything sure. else? Please. Okay. Uh, I wonder if this needs to be tabled once again so we can confer with our attorney since we uh, just have some more information that came forward. I hate to do that, but I'm wondering if it shouldn't be tabled again. Uh, City Attorney, do you have any concerns about moving forward? with the information that's been presented from uh, um, the union reps? Well, I, I think the uh, it's it's unfortunate that Mr. Brokaw is not here because uh, he's the one uh, uh, responsible for assigning the different employees uh, in that department. And, and uh, it's been my understanding. And certainly the request that they return uh, to their old job once they get their uh, commercial driver's license has been discussed. Uh, and uh, uh, the reason, uh, my understanding of the reason why it hasn't been accepted is that uh, it creates, according to Mr. Brokaw, almost an impossible situation within the department of assigning people to do <clears throat> their various duties, and we would need to hire uh, uh, an additional, at least one additional employee uh, with a commercial driver's license. Uh, and uh, it was his belief that if that person, if that application was just for an 11 or 12 month period, we wouldn't be able to fill it with a qualified individual. Um, and so I, you know, we had these discussions and, and we went through all these things and, and uh, uh, I've been under the impression uh, that uh, Mr. Brokaw uh, thought that uh, that would put him in really an untenable situation. Now, I'm not aware, you know, we didn't have specific discussions about are there already people in the department with a commercial driver's license whose duties could be assigned to cover those responsibilities without hiring somebody. Uh, so I mean, that's, you know, the suggestion here and that information that came out, uh, that's the first time I've heard that. Uh, that certainly I think would be uh, worthy of, of delay and discussion. Uh, you know, right now, uh, at least one of the employees has, has uh, uh, been on leave. The other one signed the agreement and it's been back working again. Um, the uh, 
I, again, without Mr. Broker here, I, I don't know if delaying it causes him issues or causes his department issues. I'm not aware of that. I don't know, Betty, if, if you are or not. Um, but I, we've had numerous meetings, Ted, Betty, myself, uh, we've involved uh, uh, human resources specialists from the Twin Cities that the city's used over the years. Uh, we've had a number of meetings with the union, number of meetings uh, uh, with the employees. Uh, and I and I do know that uh, it's been Ted's goal to respect these employees and keep them as employees of the cities and be as fair to him as he possibly could. Uh, and um, I assume that, that that whole process, he'd be familiar with that and would know uh, who else within his group uh, has commercial driver's license, and is there a way to just reassign them to different duties? Um, you know, I mean, he's, uh, this isn't meant in any way, shape, or form to punish these two employees. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the fact, because neither of them have been convicted of anything at this point in time. It, it's got nothing to do with uh, uh, any kind of penalty. The problem is they no longer can perform the jobs they were hired for without a commercial driver's license. Uh, and so that's been the issue. Uh, if we can find a way uh, for this to occur uh, with less hardship to them, I, I would think we'd all be in favor of that. Uh, that's not, you know, the, the point is, is to keep uh, that aspect of the city uh, uh, productive and operating in a smooth manner. Uh, it's not, the purpose of this isn't, yes, under the proposal, they're going to have reduced wages. But that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is not to save the city money by cutting their pay. Uh, so, Betty, do you, do you know of any issues with this being tabled rather than acted upon? No, it's just that we have Can you had, turn the microphone just so sorry. we have had two HR committee meetings on this and we have spoke about it at both of them at length. We've had their rep come in, we've listened to them, we've discussed we've we on the administrative side have a job to do as well as my, the administrator I was hired to take care of the the money and the financial piece of this city for the citizens. And that's what we're doing here. Um, we don't want them to lose their jobs. We've, we've come up with an agreement that helps them keep their job. It's Yes, it is a lower wage, but when they're working in the different classifications, they won't be paid that wage. They will be paid a different wage according to their union contract. And we and Commissioner, or excuse me, Director of Public Works Broca has a department to run, and that's what he was hired for as well. And that's what he's looking out to for the best interests of the citizens and providing a service that they um, deserve and are expecting as citizens. So uh, I, I know you just touched on it and I, I just want to, um, if you could just elaborate a little bit on how, how many meetings we've had on this and you, we've worked with the outside labor attorney specifically on this and their recommendation is to move forward for the betterment of the city with the agreement that's on the table, correct? That is correct. And we did have two HR committee meetings where we've discussed this, and then it's been brought back to here. I, myself, the city attorney, the labor attorney, have had conversations, um, probably two or three. Uh, the labor, uh, Dan Manick, their BA, has been in my office with us three, two or three times, emailed, I could, not count the emails we've exchanged trying to come up with this agreement and um, to meet everybody's, you know, we can't, and not everybody is unfortunately going to be happy, unfortunately. This isn't, this is not, it's a tough situation. When Please. do we get to speak then? I mean, can I speak now? Can I speak yeah, now? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so the city of International Falls has been in a great relationship with the 49ers operating engineers 
for 49 years. 46 of those I've been a member during that time. We have never been disrespected until now. That's a true story. The of International Hall's employees all work hard, every one of them. And the beauty is that we've had a good relationship and our negotiations and everything have gone good all these years. And all of a sudden, we've got this going on where years ago, when somebody got in trouble, we made sure we took care of those employees a number of times. Um, the CDL thing, first of all, it's, it's very little of what these guys do having the CDL for their job. The biggest percentage, they don't need it. It's just when they're hauling something, and somebody else can do that. That's what we did back in the old days. We hauled some, if somebody got in trouble and he couldn't drive, then somebody else drove for that person and got him to the job site. That was the beauty of compassion and people getting along. For 46 years, I've seen it until now. And I want my constituents, they're seeing me here on TV, whatever. They voted me in to get the morale up of the city employees. And this is not the way to do it. This route we're taking here is not the route to take. What Leon wants to do is go back to the table. I was going to amend the motion on something else, but I respect the chairman. If he wants to go back to the table, good for him. And two meetings, one which I missed, part of it was because I was frustrated. I don't like missing meetings. You know that. And so I missed a meeting. And so what I call is we probably had one meeting um, where we had uh, two people from the council there. And it was only just a short, short meeting. Uh, I don't see how you can even come up with, other than the fact the administration came up with the idea of what to, what to give these individuals. Um, I, uh, I've been really, I just don't know what to say. I mean, I, I gave my heart to the community, still do. And this is, this is wrong, the way it's going. And that's all I'd like to say. Okay. Mayor, hey, please. Just to clarify, I did not say it should go back. I said I wonder if this shouldn't be reconsidered and talk with the attorney. Um, as has been said, we have had two meetings on this. We discussed it in length. Uh, we decided to bring it to the board this way. Listening to our presentation, there's a little thinking outside of the box on shared duties, and I think that's a good idea. But uh, Moving forward, I, I, I guess this is a hard one, however we decide to do it. I guess I want to hear from the rest of the board. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mayor? Mayor? Well, well, go ahead, please. Please. Mr. Mayor, I don't think it's too much to ask to ask us for a deadline on this wage that they're going to be getting. I think we should put a deadline on it that once they get their CDLs, they're reinstated and going again. That's my opinion. Okay. Also, okay. Krause? Also, Krause? I would echo that and say that I, it, I think it is difficult. And now listening to um, Emma's speech and seeing petition and everybody here, I would assume that uh, those split duties are, are probably something that they're okay with. So I, I think it would be difficult to have a date on the end, although I will say, has 179A.02 subdivision 11 been taken into consideration? Or the, the National Labor Act, was that take? I mean, Joe made a pretty good point, I think, that just knowing legislation like I do, it sounded like we might be out of line on this one, and I, that, that does scare me a little bit. I don't think that we're negotiating anything. This is this is under the and and I'll I'll, I'll take it back. 
the one thing that that gets me on this whole particular issue is um, none of us were a hundred percent into the conversation because it's an employee issue. We, I was, uh, I was knowledgeable that uh, there was a situation. I was never told any names of who it was. Uh, the first time I ever found out any names of anybody that uh, we're dealing with is when I got an email from one of the employee's wives. That was the first time I found out a name. Um, with that being said, the city has never um, discussed it in the community, um, but yet we have people, members of the community that are coming to us and talking about it with names and information, and we haven't given any of that out. So the people that are talking in the community are obviously getting one side of the story. We have had multiple meetings that have discussed it, and I, I think it's a very, very tough place to be because now that I know who they are, I can tell you they're amazing employees. And I can tell you that the, those same words have been echoed in the conversations that we had at the, the HR meeting by both Councillor uh, Holden, by Councillor Deach, uh, myself, and uh, the Public Works Director, and the, uh, the City Administrator. The issue that we have here isn't about whether we have good employees or, or bad employees. People make mistakes. I totally get that. The issue that we have is we have a union contract that has a job description in it, and they can't fulfill the job description. And I hear what, uh, what um, Emma had spoke about earlier. So her position has a driver's license in it. We actually had the same conversation the first time it came up because the city administrator's job has a driver's license in it. So in the event that something were to happen where they couldn't have a driver's license, we can't have them as the city administrator. It's an issue. I get that. However, this same council, not the same council, the last council, had a really, really big issue about hiring a city employee to fill a position that they were qualified for because they couldn't lift 25 pounds to put up a, a piece of equipment. We were willing not to hire somebody over being able to lift up 25, 25 pounds. And it stood, it, it, it passed. We, uh, we needed to have medical approval to see if an employee could lift 25 pounds. So that's the issue I have. It's either, in, in the way I look at stuff, things have to be somewhat black or white. We either do or we don't. And I know that the city has done their best to bend over backwards and an end date makes a ton of sense. And I, I like the idea of an end date, but I also have had the conversation with public works director in the same HR meeting that all four of us sat in that found out that if we have to hire somebody to do additional jobs, it really messes up the whole thing in in our seniority and everything else in, in the, the department. I just, I get, uh, I, I get how tough this one is and I, I, I don't like being in this position, but they're hard decisions that we have to make. The answer is yes or no. I mean, if we're gonna move forward with uh, offering these employees these agreements um, to continue working in the department, and if not, we have to look at something else in the future. Please. Mayor Droba, I would like to amend the motion that upon the two employees obtaining a valid Minnesota commercial driver's license that they be reinstated to their current positions. We have a, we have a motion or we have an amendment to the motion. Do we have a second to that? Do we have a I second? Can, I, can, I can second that. Okay, we have an uh, amendment by Councillor Holden. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. If we're gonna Please. amend, if we're gonna amend the motion, shouldn't it be the person that made the motion? No, to do he, the can, make, he okay. can make an amendment. Okay. All right. So we have a uh, we have an amendment uh, which would have them uh, reinstated their previous pay and after they get their commercial driver's license, they'd be reinstated to their current positions. Okay. Yeah. 
And Mr. Bear, I would like to point out that if Public Works were to look to hire somebody, that would go across this desk. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we would know if the slack is being picked up or not, if that makes sense. In order for Public Works to hire somebody, it has to come across our desk. We have to approve them, um, even advertising for a position. So that would give, that gives some opportunity, dare I say, to make sure that that doesn't have to happen, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have a, a, a amendment to the motion with, uh, from Councillor Holden, which would um, add the language that uh, the employee would be reinstated at their previous pay and um, position after obtaining a commercial driver's license. Is that correct? Yep. Any other discussion on that? Hearing none, I'll call the question on the amendment. It's a tough one, but I'll say yes. Yes. Aye. And I'll vote uh, yes as well. Motion carries 4-0 to amend to the original um, uh, motion. So now our motion that is before us is approve the letter of agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 49 Local 49ers Public Works and Administrative Office with the caveat that the employee would receive uh, his previous position and pay upon obtaining a commercial driver's license. Is that correct? Is that what everyone agrees to right now? Okay. Do we have that on the table? Any discussion on that? Mr. Mayor, please. I, I, and then just for clarification, so if the individuals involved are operating a piece of machinery or doing something above the, the job classification that is in this letter, they would be paid that, that, accord, that rate accordingly. So if they were on a loader or something, they would get paid loader rate. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We have a, a motion and a second, and we have an amendment. Chair would entertain a motion, or I'm sorry, Chair would call the question on Aye. the motion with an amendment. Aye. Aye. And I'm going to vote no, but the motion passes. Three for the motion, one against the motion. So next we have the second. Uh, um, to, to just save time, I'm going to ask if the council wants to have the same uh, reading for the second. Yeah. Okay. Which only makes sense. I would agree with that 100%. So I'm going to um, I'm going to ask if the uh, as chair I'm looking for a motion to approve the letter of agreement between the City of International Falls and the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 49ers Public Works and Administrative Office with the caveat and change of the employee will receive full previous pay and position after obtaining a commercial driver's license. Chair would entertain that motion. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I, again, will vote no. Uh, the motion does carry three to one, so those will be uh, drafted and presented to the employees. Whew, got through that one. Uh, Committee of the Whole uh, Recommendations, uh, Part A, consider demolition of nine tax forfeiture properties located within city limits as per agreement with Kuching County Land and Forestry. Chair would entertain a motion or that motion. So we'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next, consider rejecting all bids for the 2021 International Falls Building Improvements Project. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion for the rejection of bids. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. 
Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Please. And then we're just noting that we're rejecting these bids to make them a part of a bigger package. Is that what we had discussed? Uh, just so the public's aware? Uh, was it this one that we were? These are the these are the improvements to the library and was it no, not? that was we crack were, sealing. We were going to do that. Crack, crack sealing. Okay, yeah. I apologize. So um, this one, just for, for community knowledge, this uh, this came up and we have a bigger package. Paul, can you mute yours because I can hear myself again. So this was part of a bigger package earlier in the year. The city had uh, went out for request for three um, uh, three positions for the the city to work on the um, the library, and the bid came in considerably over the engineer's estimate. Uh, so we rejected that bid, and we broke up the part uh, the bid into three different projects, and uh, each one of the projects were again considerably over the um, the engineer's estimate, but we only had one bid come in. So we're hoping that if we do these projects next year or rebid them next year, we can get more people to bid. But uh, it came in, uh, each project came in roughly $100,000 over over uh, bid price. So um, we, we chose to reject it, and that's why it's before the council now. Uh, so we have a motion and second. Call the question. Aye. Aye. And I will vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Consider the first reading of an ordinance imposing a franchise fee on Minnesota Power. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion on that. So move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Do we have a second? A we'll second. A second by Councillor Kraus. Discussion? Again, just for public information, the reason that we're doing this does not impose a fee to the residents and uh, Minnesota Power or any utility cannot raise the rates on employees or raise the rates on customers to cover this. Um, they have to go through the um, their correct channels to be able to do that. But this is so that uh, the we can offset some of the costs that uh, we're paying for all of the light fixtures, other things in the community um, that Minnesota. Joe, do you want to take that? Come on up. <laughs> so uh, it's just a way that we can uh, recoup some of the fees from uh, Minnesota Power. Um, so we have a motion and second. Call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Consider approving the joint powers agreement between the City of International Falls uh, and Independent School District uh, 361 for a joint recreation commission for the period of July 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2021, and allow the uh, two entities to approve proposed updates to the agreement. Chair would entertain a motion to that. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, can I have one of the two members from our rec commission uh, just give an explanation of that? Actually, I'm going to hand this over to Administrator Bergstrom. She will best be able to explain where we're at. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, actually, um, Stacy from the school district had phoned me a while back and asked um, just a few questions in regards to the joint powers and what information I had had with that. Some of it pertains to um, payroll, how payroll is being processed, the audit, um, different regulations that they're mandated by with their rules and regulations. We just have, we just want to be able to go through it a little bit with our auditors, make sure that it's up to date, that according to new statutes and things that it's still current and valid. And just want a little bit of time to go through that and validate it. Okay, fair enough. That's what we're asking. All right, we have a motion from uh, Councillor Kraus. We have a second from Councillor Holden. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries 4-0. Any other business to come before the council? Hearing none, we'll go to the board's uh, reports of boards, committees, and department heads. We'll start with the city administrator. I have nothing additional, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. City attorney. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, I think uh, we've got a lot going on. Uh, many employee issues uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, 
that we've worked very hard on uh, and um, uh, takes a lot of time. They've been difficult issues, uh, employee issues always are. Uh, Apart from that, uh, the blight activity is still going on. We had a number of cases uh, in court uh, last week. Uh, I think on your desk before you should have the updated uh, pending cases. Uh, and we have been making progress uh, slower than we would like, uh, but some. And, and uh, uh, you know, I, I think the step taken tonight uh, with regard to tax forfeited properties and possible demolition, demolition of some of those uh, is a step in the right direction. And, and uh, we are, uh, I think people are starting to take more pride in their properties and what the community looks like. And, and uh, uh, but it's a difficult process and, and uh, we just have, we have a few people that, that just, uh, for whatever reason, don't seem to get it. Uh, and we just have to keep pursuing that, uh, and we will keep doing it. Uh, Fire Marshal and I probably communicate two or three times a day uh, on different things, and and uh, but uh, I and I I commend uh, Jared Baldwin on the job he's doing. He's he's working very hard, and, and uh, we couldn't accomplish. Uh, you know, we, we've accomplished more in, in the last six months uh, since we had more than we did in the prior 10 years when I was the city attorney. So uh, there's a lot happening, and, and he's the primary reason why I'm doing it. So I give him a lot of credit. Any questions at all for me? Or? That's all I have. Thank you. We have the, uh, the police report is in here in your packet. Chief, did you have anything you wanted to add? Okay. Thank you. Report of mayors, uh, sorry, mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Do we have anything to anything to report? We really haven't had any meetings, so nothing to report there. So the last piece is audience, open forum. Does anybody have anything they want to address the council on right now? Mr. Manick? Oh, sure. Can I just uh, here? It's, uh, for Walt to be able to hear, you got to approach. And they do, we do have journalists on. If you could state your yeah, name, I'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, again, with that, we'll, just a question on, on requires basic urgency. I don't know when I can get the business manager signatures. I, I guess the question for the council would be when the employees, one employee, go to work. He signs it tomorrow. I will be in International Falls tomorrow for some other business. Back to you. I'm going to defer to our legal counsel on that. Well, and I, I, I guess I, I would defer to uh, Mr. Broca, the public works director. Uh, he's the one that made the decision for the initial employee that signed the proposed agreement to go back right away, uh, and, and there wasn't any delay. So, I mean, if, if that same process is followed, uh, I would expect that the other employee, uh, upon signing uh, and upon the Dan signing, uh, would likely be eligible to return. But I think that's a, a, a decision that that uh, our public works director should make, uh, rather than the council. I don't think the council wants to micromanage all of those decisions that the department heads are making. Is the public works director here this week? Yes, okay. I just didn't know if he wasn't here tonight. I didn't know if he was on vacation. And then just for your information, the, the employee that did sign a previous agreement, uh, the union never did sign that, so that is that null and void? You know, he, he can just, this agreement that will be presented to him will be the official document? Yes, that absolutely. That would be my understanding. City approved anyway, so, so, so both, both employees will sign the, the one you voted on tonight. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the last agreement was never signed by everybody, so it never was a contract. It was just a proposal, and now that's off the table and gone. So, so yeah, I would assume. Okay. 
open for him. Yeah, we skipped oh my you. Gosh. We skipped you. You were gone. Okay. Well, I have a question that I, I have two questions that I have to ask the city attorney. Um, I, I really have to. Um, so I see that a lot of our uh, pending criminal blight cases have been pushed out to August. Were any of those finalized, or did they all just get pushed out? And why are they continually getting pushed out? Because they uh, have. Uh, for the most part, entered not guilty pleas, okay. uh, and uh, they haven't given us trial dates yet. Uh, so, hopefully, by the time the next time they come up, we'll have some trial dates. Uh, and my expectation is is that once we try one of those, if we're successful and, and get a conviction, uh, then things may fall into place, uh, uh, and others won't go to trial. Uh, but until until we have one and and uh, you know, whether it be a court trial or jury trial, and until we get a conviction on these, you know, maybe some people are hoping that uh, a jury will not follow the law and, and, and not apply the ordinance the, the way it was passed. Uh, uh, but that's, it's very frustrating that things just keep getting pushed down the road. Uh, and uh, right now we're, for city cases, we're getting Two days a month. We had two days in July. We've got two days in August. Two days in September. Uh, and uh, once the calendar gets full, and it's not just blight cases; it's all these criminal cases. And and on a typical day, you know, I probably have 35 or 40 cases. Well, once those time slots are full, then they go off to the next time. And and so we're actually in our, the last court date we had uh, last week. Uh, Every date in August and every date uh, is full. So now we're going into September. And, and so that's how things, and, and most defendants and defense lawyers, their biggest strategy is delay, delay, delay. Mm -hmm. uh, and until we get a court trial date that's set, and, and usually they'll, they'll establish, okay, uh, here's a week. And, and we're going to, but in our case, again, it's made more difficult because they have to bring a judge in from either Beltrami County or Itasca County to come up here for a week and try cases. But when that day comes, we're going to put every, you know, our 18 pending cases, we'll put them all on for that same week and we'll just try them one after another if we have to. Uh, but until we get those trial dates, uh, they're just delaying things intentionally. And then my other question um, is very similar to to this. One of the um, situations that we have on a, crim a pending criminal blight case um, has now started to um, do work on their property without uh, any permits or um, any information. I, I have contacted the building official and there's nothing that his office can do is it possible for us to get a uh, cease and desist for a um, property owner that's already pending le legislation or pending uh, criminal action for his actions and now he's doing it on another property without any licenses or permits? Well, again, that's a violation. We can prosecute it criminally uh, with, a, with a separate case. As a part of that case, once the defendant's been in front of the judge, one of the conditions of release that we can request is that no uh, improvements take place until he's got the proper permits and those kinds of things. Uh, so but that do we need? And here's my question, and and maybe I'm way off. Do we need to wait for a? Do we have to wait for a criminal? It's it's against the law to do what he's doing right now. Well, <laughs> I mean, what? it's our interpretation that it's against the law. Yeah, we've got, I mean, I've got one case that we're prosecuting uh, where the individual, his defense is he's not a person, uh, and we have no jurisdiction over him for uh, a speeding ticket and driving without a license. He doesn't need a license. I mean, these... Also, Holden, <laughs> this is not going to work for you in court. <laughs> so there, there can be some crazy defenses. But no, we're, we're not going to be able to prevent him from doing what he's doing. I mean, we can give him cease and desist orders uh, administratively. We can tell him not to do it, which we have done, I believe. Uh, and now the next step is to bring him to court. We're not going to be able to 
force him to stop until we get a court order. We're not going to be able to get a court order unless until he's in front of a judge, because he's entitled to due process. He's entitled to make his arguments to a judge. Very frustrating. I'd like the not a person defense. Yeah, I'm going with it too. I'm not a mayor. <laughs> well, it's not it's not going to work. I can tell you, <laughs> but that's the defense. All right, and uh, and again, I, I apologize that I had to step out of the room. Uh, was there any reports from council committees, boards, and commissions? Okay. With that being said, I just want to bring up one thing that uh, that did happen today at the Kita meeting. Um, it did come out that Kita has started to pay back the loan and a loan is going to be going to the, a loan payment is going to be going to the city in the amount of $39,249.30 that gets them their third payment uh, of the five and it is anticipated that the next two payments will be coming in May of 2022 and May of 2023 to get back on on track uh, but those payments uh, are moving forward, and that is the two percent low interest or two percent loan that the city and county gave to Kita to help do the um, new cold weather box. Um, just just wanted to get you guys knowledgeable on that. That is back on track. Um, I have nothing else uh, from boards or commissions. I believe we had one audience member come back up. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward? Hearing none, uh, you have correspondence from the Falls Library and our next regular city council meeting will be Monday, August 2nd at 5.30. This meeting is adjourned.